I'm Mel Stewart, and this is Swim Swam Podcast. Joining me today, someone I haven't interviewed and I've wanted to interview. I'm excited about this interview. We're talking to three-time world champion, two-time Olympic champion, and team Speedo athlete, Zach Apple. What's up, buddy? Not much, man. Glad to be on. A little reminder on your nickname zapple which sounds like a very organic thing that's what people call you like hey man zapple but i i personally after as as we arrive right now in this interview at this moment in history you know we're not post pandemic but we're in the we're hopefully we're in the last part of the pandemic yeah. coming off of your olympic games coming off some great swims you know in in, in this last quad I think you should be the rock of gibraltar <laughs> you're the you're the anchor man that keeps throwing down those 46s and and from from a fan standpoint, that that makes for Team USA. It makes me feel relieved because I think there was always a question of, you know, who's going to assume that 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 mantle of Nathan Adrian? And it looks like yeah. you filled that spot. Is it is that a fair statement? Yeah, uh, it's definitely something that a spot that I want to be in and a spot that I I don't take lightly. And um, <clears throat> you know, there was kind of a toss up in in twenty nineteen of like who was going to be on that relay, and it was it was truly a toss up. Um, uh, between Nathan and I, and uh, they put Nathan on on the four medley, and uh, obviously we went on to lose, not not because of Nathan or anything like that, um, but it was definitely something that I I uh, wanted to be going into the Olympics, and uh, was happy to to fill that role and and kind of perform for the team. Um, it's a uh, we're going to unpack that. We're gonna we're gonna go through that. I want I want I'd like to do I'd, I'd like to do an Apple history um, review because yeah. it's it, 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 your 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 trajectory is so exciting. It it feels it just feels so entrepreneurial and American, the American dream. It's it's um I love it. But this is just for folks listening out there, we're, we are gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about the Olympic Games and and Zach had an extraordinary dramatic Olympic Games. Um, of course, you know two golds and then the the four by two. He had a he had a really tough swim. I'm sure it was a character building swim, yeah. um, and a, a tough swim coming off of uh, you know it was a double form. But we're going to unpack that too, and we're going to we're going to get excruciating, excruciatingly painful with it. Well, <laughs> he, he has to he have, we're going to have to get all the marrow out of that moment. But let's take it back. Let's go back to Western Kentucky. Why did you com- why did you commit to Western Kentucky? Yeah. Um, so like my my swimming journey uh, is not quite yet, but like. Uh, you know, one that usually everybody has where they start swimming when they're six and kind of, that's all they do their whole life. Um, so I didn't start swimming until I was 16 really. Um, and so I was fine uh, going into my senior year. I wasn't like, you know, this star recruit or anything. Um, and so I took, I took my five visits, um, to like all like mid major uh, schools. And then where did you take, where did you take them? Get it. We got okay. uh, Cleveland state, um, Western Kentucky, Oakland, which is in Michigan, um, Queens, the D2 school. And then I did take an Ohio state trip. Um, and just cause it was in, in, in state and the kind of the home school. Uh, it, it, this, this, this wasn't Cal Stanford, Florida. Yeah. Um, yeah. In yeah, State. They, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't do the interesting. Not. So that, that's where I, you were. Uh, I got, I got turned away from a lot of schools when I first was going through the recruiting stuff. Um, and so I took, took my five trips. And uh, when I was at Western Kentucky, that's when Claire was still there, Donahue. Um, and so she was trained there. And she, uh, on my trip, she brought like her medal in and uh, her gold medal from 12. And that was like a cool moment to, to have. And I was like, all right, these like, they know what they're doing. They've had one, like they have an Olympian, uh, you know, currently kind of still training at that time. And uh, so it was like, felt like that was the place I was gonna be able to do it. Um, and out of the options that I had Be- beautiful place, but it's, um, you know, y- you can frame you, 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 you detail the history. You tell me what happened because it, you, your, your career is marked by drama. So you, you unpack the drama. What happened there with the Western Kentucky thing? Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I actually am not like, don't have that much more information than, than <laughs> swim slam put out. Uh, so, so going through my senior year, 
I'm, I'm doing dual enrollment classes at the uh, Miami of Ohio. Um, and so I'm, I'm sitting in an English class and, uh, we have like our commits and like a, a group meet together. And, uh, somebody sends a swim time article in that says that they're suspending their program. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> it's like my, my, uh, my swimming future is going to be a little different. Luckily I had gotten like significantly better. I had huge time drops my senior year. Um, and so kind of redid the whole recruiting process in like four weeks, um, drove down to, to Auburn and, and kind of visited that campus, met the, the staff and, and kind of just felt like it was a good fit. No, it's a, um, so I mean, it, it, kudos to, to Hawk for stepping up, you know, yeah. it's, um, it's, it's a, I, th- you know, he inherited a dynasty mm-hmm. and, um, I, I think every coach on earth would like to be able to, I'm sorry if my eyes are bouncing all over the place. Oh, I'm, I'm, you, you have such a deep history. No, but you, you know, it's Hawk inherited a dynasty. It's a hard act to follow. Yeah. I think he had moments of success and moments of mastery, but ultimately for him, um, you know, it, it, we, we moved to another, it, it ended up, it ended up, ended up going away. It, it, yeah. it, it, it took a bad turn. It took a bad mm-hmm. turn, but, um, as, as if somebody who's an Olympic athlete, you know, an Olympic brother, I, I was hoping that he'd be successful because, you know, I, I like seeing people with experience on the big stage, yeah. um, stepping into those coaching shoes. I think it's a unique perspective and, and unique mastery that you have when, when you're, you know, if you, if you, if you can be a successful coach and for you guys, for your, your experience for three years, it yeah. worked. It's a, yeah. it's a perfect trajectory. Freshman year, you were a baby. You were oh, yeah. such a kid. Yeah. I didn't make any finals my freshman year at NC's. Um, <clears throat> I think my highest finish was like 18th. I just missed the, I think it was actually the two free was my highest finish. Um, and so yeah, I think I think Brett's Brett is an amazing coach. I just think there's so much more that goes into being a head coach of a university that is so much more than just being a swim coach. Um, and I think that's where where Brett struggled trying to to do all all the extra stuff that's not swimming related. Um, <clears throat> and obviously the swimming part. I mean, he still has Bruno, and, and he had quite a quite a good pro group there um, while I was there, and so. He, your experience, your experience was good, and just for people listening out there, you were nineteenth in the fifth in the in the fifty free, twentieth uh, in the two hundred free, there it is, okay. um, thirty thirty fifth in the hundred free. Yeah, yeah, and I was uh, on but, prelims relay. I think the prelims two free relay. Yeah, something, but but you know, freshman year. You, yeah, I, I remember the picture. I remember seeing you, and you were you look like you look like you hadn't gone through maturity yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I definitely was uh, a bit smaller and uh, not nearly, nearly as as knowledgeable about what I was doing. Uh, actually, that two free, I think I was in heat one, uh, and the first seat of the two free, and I had a conversation with Tyler McGill, um, who was on staff at that point as well, and he we kind of like reworked my two free strategy like twenty minutes before the race, <laughs> and uh, it worked out pretty well. But yeah, it was just so much kind of deer in the headlights, uh, at that point. <clears throat> Sophomore year, but you, 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 the, the trajectory you take it at Auburn and, uh, mm-hmm. you, you do this with Hawk and it's a, uh, your sophomore year, you sophomore to junior year, you, you, you make a move. This is a, this is a breakthrough. What, what happened between your freshman and sophomore year that, that puts you on this, on this trajectory towards success? Yeah. So summer after freshman year was, was 2016 trials. Uh, I went, I didn't make a semi or anything. Um, I think I went a little bit off best times. I had, I had kind of tapered to get cuts for the meet um, and then went to trials and then went a little bit slower, but still had a good experience. Um, you know, kind of the the end of the meet, they named the Olympic team and, you know, they parade them around to come up out of the floor and, you know, this is your, your United States Olympic team. And I remember Brett made us all go to the the last session to to see, you know, the team get named and everything. And that was kind of a defining moment for me, uh, sitting in the stands, watching like the team get named. I was like, not that anyone expected me to be on that team or anything, um, but I was sitting in the stands, just kind of feeling like, you know, there was more to this that I, that I more that I wanted out of, of the experience. And I didn't really want to sit in the stands. I wanted to be on on teams. I wanted to, you know, get named to that team and, and be on the the deck, kind of getting paraded around. And so. 
that was just something that I kind of took into the next year, uh, into the so- end of sophomore year. Um, that it was just like I wanted to be on a team the following year, uh, whether that be the Wugs team or the World team or or anything like that. It's uh, it's it's important to see where you're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. It's important. It's um, what was going through your mind. So you know, kudos to Hawk. Hawk he made you go yeah. and see that moment. Um, and you're not there. You're not standing among those athletes. Um, but you want to be. Yeah, that that dream has to be there. Yeah, for sure. What's going through your head? Um, you know, it just felt like, yeah, I just felt like I wanted. I wanted more out of the experience of the, what I was getting, um, you know, not making it even a semifinal. Um, and again, I don't think anyone really expected me to make a semifinal um, or, or even be a slight contender. Um, but I just, I just knew that there was more, more in the sport for me to be able to accomplish. I just felt, felt it in, in my bones. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah. You've got to feel it. That moment was uh, hopefully some neuroplasticity, some rewiring in your yeah. brain. It's, it's. I think you clearly you, you were you were doing the work. Sophomore year at at Auburn, you had. Uh, let's see here, you tied for fourth in the fifty, eighteen nine seven, twelfth in the in the two hundred free, fourteenth in the hundred free. Um, you know this this was a, this was a big step up. I feel like when, when with, especially with 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 men, something happens after that freshman year. It's like a, a, yeah. did you put on a lot of muscle mass? It, there seems like there's a lot of growth. There's a lot of development freshman to sophomore year. Was that your experience? Yeah, uh, I actually didn't. My my weight didn't change very much. Um, I've kind of been like a steady steady. You know, just under two hundred, um, almost all the way like since my freshman year. Um, but I feel like it's the the distribute the the weight distribution has changed probably um a little more on the shoulders uh and so yeah definitely that was a year where i saw saw a lot of growth um made big moves in the weight room for sure uh pk was the or the weight coach there and that was always a good time um with him and uh yeah i think i earned the max number of all american honors you can in, in a year for my sophomore year with with the relays and the individuals um and so it was definitely a big year and in a kind of a good, good spot to be in going into that summer, um, you know, having on best times and, and kind of building that confidence into to the, the world's trials. Yeah. Um, let, me, let me, let's just stay with college because okay. uh, you, 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 the currently the, the drama is in the college and you start with Western Kentucky and, and you're moving in that direction at Auburn and it's uh, and no fault of yours because you're progressing by your junior year. You're third in the 50 free. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Here. You had a successful third last campaign. You tied for fifth in the 50. Yeah, third in the and, two. And um, let's see here. 200, 200 free. What did you go? 131. One, yeah. No, 31-1, I think. 131-18. Yeah, one, one. And your 100 free was a 41-3-6. Yeah. So your, your junior year, I feel like at a college when you're your junior year, you start to feel a little bit like a man. Yeah. You know, you're you freshman year, you're a deer in the headlights. Sophomore year, you have some you're, you're gaining some strength and know how and the fear starts to slide off by your junior. Year, you're starting to feel like I got this. Yeah. Is that a good representation of where you were in your head? For sure. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Going into that, that college season, I had made the world's team the pre- previous year. And so I felt pretty cemented and that I was able to compete with the, the big dogs and, and all the, the top guys. Um, yeah, I remember the the two free. I was in between Blake and Townley, um, and Blake had just broken one thirty for the first time, leading off the AP relay two nights before. And so, um, yeah, I felt like you know I didn't feel like I was in a, an intimidating spot. I felt like that's where I needed to be. Um, you know that I felt comfortable racing those guys and being <clears throat> being part of that that he and those kinds of kinds of races. Um, yeah. So you find out that um, you have a lot of affection for Brett. That's clear in, in all your quotes yeah. and in the and in, in, in your your what, what happened there. But um, you know it. You know after dealing what you dealt with 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 Western Kentucky, and then you get to your junior year. It's kind of a sacred moment moving into your senior year. He resigns. Um, yeah. You know where were you? How did you find this out? What went? 
and how did it affect you? It's, it, it seems like you handled it well, but it, it couldn't have been fun in the moment. Yeah, certainly not. Um, Auburn was like, has a very special place in my heart. I, I love, I love, love, love my time there. Um, the school is still feels like home to me. Um, and so <clears throat> Brett, Brett, like we have a meeting, Brett tells us he's like stepping down and I was, I was true and like going to be true and true. Like I wanted to stay at Auburn. I wanted to finish out my senior year. Um, you know, that's where I, that's what I felt like my, they were my, that was my team. Those were my guys. Like I was ready to, to kind of, you know, finish it out. And so they start the, the university starts doing a head coach search. Um, <clears throat> and I'm, I'm pretty fine with, with whatever happens there. I feel like I'm, I'm going to stay, um, I feel confident that I can be successful with, with whoever they hire and, and whatever the staff is. <clears throat> and actually our, our weight coach, uh, PK Karkoska, who uh, we call him PK because he's a, a place kicker at Auburn on the football team. And then he kind of, as soon as he graduated, stepped into the strength conditioning and uh, kind of was the, the swimming strength conditioning coach through that mid 2000s run with, with the, the kind of legendary Auburn teams. And he had a meeting with me and was essentially saying it doesn't matter what the staff is, um, who they hire, whatever you, you want to do. Um, you know, there's not really a whole lot of guys here trying to do what you're trying to do. Um, well, the guys there were, I mean, like I said, they were my guys, like that was my team. I love them, but nobody else was, was really trying to, to succeed on the international stage. Um, and so essentially he was, he was telling me I needed to leave. And for him to, as somebody who had played football at Auburn, you know, been there through the whole run, um, for him to kind of tell me like, you might need to look, look some other places. If you, if you want to keep on this, this path, um, to kind of surround yourself with, with like-minded people who are trying to achieve similar things. Um, and so I kind of started to, to look around where I wanted to be. Uh, I knew if I, if I wanted to go to Florida, I was gonna have to stay out a year. So I didn't really want to do that. Um, I was, I was, I was dating a girl at the time, so I didn't want to go to California. <laughs> she was too far away. Um, and so Indiana was kind of that nice, that nice middle ground where, and they, the team was on fire. Um, and it's just, they're still doing awesome. Uh, you know, Blake was there, Cody Zane was here at the time. Um, Ashley Knighty, who was, was killing it at the time. Uh, and so it just kind of felt like, like, all right, if I'm, if I'm going to do it, this is where I'm going to go. And, uh, and actually Kurt Rand, who, who's now on staff at UNC, but he was on staff at Auburn and he was moving to Indiana as well. So that made it a nice, um, comfortable transition. And so, just kind of was, was where the pieces fell. And, uh, it was a decision that was not easy. I had a, I had a meeting with the, the Auburn team. Uh, I was a captain that year. And so I, I kind of had a meeting with the guys where I was like, I think the, you know, whoever they hire is going to do well. And, but I just don't think this is where I'm, where, where I need to be in my career. And, uh, and they were all super supportive and that was a, that was a tough meeting though. Yeah. It's, um, Good for you. This is uh, you're, you're making decisions that are hard decisions, and if we always have these crossroads in life, where if um, if you don't make the right one, it it, it can domino something yeah. very very special. Uh, but Indiana felt like a logical move because it's just that that pro group was there, and if you know yeah. if you're, if you're, if you're if we're tracking through your NC two A experience, um, you know your meters, you're clearly a meter swimmer. You know, we're watching it. We're watching the summertime going, this guy sits on top of the water. Uh, so yards to meters, you're definitely a meter swimmer. Yards to meters. I, you know, if I talk to some elites, I say, Hey man, if you can, if you can't swim meters, are you a real swimmer? You can only <laughs> swim yards. What, what are you? You're a special animal. We love yeah. you. You're special. You got talent. But if you can't swim meters, <laughs> do you, does that, does that, does that hold space in your head? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's exactly like that, but, but it's definitely where all the, all the accolades come from is the, the big pool. Um, it's kind of where, where all the, the fame and, and notoriety comes, comes along and, and the, the big accomplishments. And so, yeah, it's definitely something that I always wanted to be, be uh, good at and something that I, that I kind of always focused on. Yeah. You, you can, um, you can hit it, you can slam in yards, 
but something happens, man, it meters me something happens in the middle of the pool to, to 99% <laughs> of athletes. And, uh, but I'm, here's my theory on this. I don't know if you've thought about it. This is my theory. My theory is swimming such a difficult sport. You need to experience shared pain and, <laughs> It, on the NC2A level, you're experiencing shared pain in the most fun way, the best possible way ever. Sure. And that just doesn't happen when we flip to long course. Yeah. And I think that we would retain a lot more talent if we had that experience through the long course season. What do you think? Yeah, for sure. It definitely is a, a very different uh, dynamic kind of because you're going into the the long course season and you're, you're just kind of swimming for yourself at that point. You don't have that, that team behind you. I mean, your teammates are there most of the time, <clears throat> but I mean, some people go back home for, for the summer seasons and, and whatnot. And so it is definitely a little more, more, uh, you know, lonesome. And uh, so, yeah, I definitely think that could be, if we could somehow figure out how to get the, the NCAA to, I don't know, transfer over to long course to, to get kids to take it more seriously. Uh, like, yeah. You got, you got to motivate college coaches to, to, to maybe, maybe, maybe there should be two seasons yeah. just going through the summertime, but then, then that takes away the college coaches got, they got to make their camp money too. They got to yeah, make that camp, true. they got to run that camp business, which I appreciate, yeah. Yeah. but it is what it is. You transfer to Indiana. Um, and, uh, you know, you, 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 you make the tough call, but it is, it is this, it is, you know, I don't want to say it's semi-pro, but you're, you're, you are dovetailing. You're making that segue into your professional life. Mm, yeah. And that had to be top of mind when, when you're, when you're dropping into a program like that, Ray Luz has created a very unique environment. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a collegiate team that's, that's not Stanford or Cal to do as well as he's done. Yeah. It, that's impressive. And that, and to do it also with the, with this the pro group that he's developed is, is pretty impressive. How was your experience there? Yeah, um, definitely. It was like a long term decision um, when I came. It was it was a decision for my post collegiate career, um, certainly. Um, but it, it was so I was kind of in the the pure sprint at Auburn uh, with Brett and uh, came up here, and and we, they definitely do. We definitely do a little more, a little more volume, uh, especially when I first got here, uh, Westfall is kind of who I had trained mainly under Mike Westfall. And, uh, we were, we were hitting it pretty hard and, and that was a kind of a tough transition. Um, but I was like ready to, one of the, one of my biggest strengths, I think is, uh, kind of this blind faith in, in a, in a coach, um, I don't ask questions. I mean, I, I do ask more questions the, the older I get and the, the more knowledgeable I get. But uh, back in the day, I, I didn't really ask questions. I, I did what the coaches told me to, I, and I did it to a T. I mean, I was, I was this, yeah, I kind of said like a blind faith um, and, and that they were, they had what was best in mind for me. And so when I showed up, it was the same thing. I uh, was grinded out with, with the, the team and, and with Mike and, um, yeah, it was a transition, but it was obviously one that, that kind of paid off and, and it's worked out well. Let's, 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 so let's, let's, let's step over to the long course career because it's, um, at world championships, that was a, that was a big, that was a big moment. It was a, uh, there was a whole lot going on. There was sickness on the team. Um, it, it, it you know, performances were, were all over the place. Um, but it, but but you did something very unique. This, I, I feel like this was a big breakthrough moment for you. Uh, when you, when you dropped the 46, yeah. uh, just in, in the four by one freestyle relay that, that had to be like, you had to be like, okay, I'm on what, what was going there? Was that expected? Um, no. So I, I just, uh, I had gone straight from lugs in Naples to, to camp in um, in Singapore. And then we went to Korea. And so you needed more rest. Yeah, 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 exactly. And so I, I did well at Wugs. I, I went, I went 47 flat start for the first time at that meet. Um, and so, you know, I knew I was having a good summer. I was, I was feeling good. Got to camp. Camp was going super well. I was, you know, almost feeling better as the camp went on, um, kind of progressing towards worlds. And then, yeah, we get to worlds uh, I can't remember what I split in prelims, 47 mid, whatever it was. Um, and so I was like, all right, sweet. That's like kind of right where I am. And, and then at, at night, uh, the 46, eight was, yeah, I don't know if it was, 
I don't know if I knew I had it in me uh, at that time, but then once it happens, you know, it's like, all right, that's like, that's what I am now. That's, that's what we're doing. That's the, the, the bar that I set for myself. And, and uh, yeah, it was, it was a pretty cool, cool thing. I remember I touched the wall and Blake's standing, you know, above me or no, no, no. Yeah. Blake's standing above me and he's just like going nuts and I don't like know what's happening or whatever. I just swim off to the side and get out and watch Nathan uh, anchor and we went and whatever. And then we're walking, you know, walking off the pool deck and Blake's like, dude, you split 46, eight. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, that's, that's nuts. All right, sweet. We're, we're, we're in it now. Let's go. Let's go. I have something to say. Yeah. I just, I just want to provide insight. Well, you know, and, and we should, we should say, Hey, you know, your team speedo athlete, you know, you, you've got the, you got the world championship medals, you got the Olympic medals. Now you, you, you've checked this speedo box and it's deserved, but we track, and that's the business of swimming, but we, we track athletes and we track like their engagement in the marketplace. Cause we see it. It's like, it's like the matrix. It's like watching the matrix across five computers <laughs> news comes out and you see the audience gravitate towards certain personalities and, and it's earned it's, it's, it's earned. But this summer, was was you know in many ways it's like if if it was a netflix series that you're going to binge watch that summer you had a starring role yeah. normally world university games not 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 a big traffic driver at swim swam people yeah. check in they did they show the respect for that for for this for this event but it's not it's not this is an a list yeah but we got a lot of traction on it we got a lot of traction because of you know you know because of your performance and then to come off of that and go to world championships. So what I'm saying is your fan base, they've learned about you at the NC2A level, but you, you, you gained the love in the summer of 19. That's, that's where the love came. And it was a yeah. slow burn. <laughs> that's fun. Yeah, it's cool. It's really it cool. cool. It is cool. And uh, so let's, let's move on to the four by two. You, you, you put down a 146. You know, here's a good question. You, you split a 146.03, but you can't fake meter swimming if you're if you're trying to pop if you're trying to pop a 200 meter freestyle 200 meter yeah. freestyle is it's more painful than the 200 meter butterfly 200 free if you swim it correctly sucks um you've got to be doing real work just out of curiosity you know what kind of base are you laying down to be able to pull off a one you know one a 14603 split yeah um definitely like uh, at that time I was definitely doing uh, a more a higher volume um, kind of in the, in the earlier season. Um, but it's funny enough. Um, I don't know this past, this past year, I kind of moved back into strength group going into to the last summer. And then I, I went uh, first best time in like three years in the two free. And so it's, it's, it feels like it, nothing makes sense, you know? And, uh, but I don't know. I think, it's more of a, of a mindset thing where in training, I, I know that, you know, that I've, I've swam plenty of two frees and, and some hurt more than others. Um, and, and I know that, you know, I have to push, push myself a little bit harder in, the, in those 200 pace sets, um, you know, especially in, those, in the long course ones, um, just so I can't be ready for that. Um, oftentimes when you're, when you're benefiting from uh, your get home power, it's the, it's the work you did the year before. Does that check out for you or the totality of the work you've done, you know, 24 months ahead. Yeah. And usually that, that one year, you know, when you're rolling into the last six, three months, you're like, wow, I'm not doing much work at all. <laughs> well, I'm not so much faster. I don't know. Does that check out for you? Um, yeah. So, so it was weird because like whatever the indie pro swim was the last meet before trials. And, uh, I think I went, <laughs> I swam terrible at that meet so bad. I think I'm at like 153 in the two free. And so, but, uh, it's kind of back to that same thing that I touched on earlier, where it's just like, I was just like trusting the, trusting the process, knowing that, you know, I'd put in the work, um, obviously it wasn't showing up in that moment, but it didn't really matter at the indie pro swim. Nobody really cares how you do there. Um, it matters when it, when it matters. And so, um, it wasn't like a, I mean, it obviously wasn't like pumps. You got 153, but I was, wasn't overly nervous about it either. I was like, ah, it is, it's, it is what it is. It's a swim now. It's not, not the swim that I need to have in four weeks or whatever it was. So well, I'm glad that didn't trip you out. Um, <laughs> but a 153, 
four weeks ahead does feel like somebody who's doing honest work. You know, yeah. if, you're, if, you're, if you're going 153. So that can mean two things. That can mean you're not doing work or you've worked too much. And I, yeah. and clearly you, you had been doing some, you've been, your, your intensity have was there. Sure. <laughs> you were rewarded world championships, 2019. Um, we got to talk about that, that last medley relay anchor. That was pretty eye popping. Yeah. Um, this is, uh, this, this is one that goes down in the, in the history books. Um, talk me through it. Talk me through that race. Yeah. So kind of leading into that was like the, this whole debate about if they were going to put me or Nathan on the relay and the coaches were good about it. They talked to both of us and Nathan's such a good guy. And I, I, I feel like he was from what the coaches told me, I didn't sit, I didn't have a conversation with Nathan about it, but they, he, Nathan was like, whatever you guys think is better. And that's what I was saying as well. I was like, whatever the staff thinks is, is going to be good. I think we're, we were pretty comparable. I mean, our, our, or he has obviously a little bit more uh, experience in that spot, but um, you know, I, I was, I was very open to, to either way. Um, they told me I was gonna be on the prelims. I was like, that's fine. I have full confidence in Nathan. I think he'll, he'll get the job done obviously. And so I saw prelims sweet. We got a lane in the stands for finals watching. And, <clears throat> you know, I think there's just a lot of things that could have gone, gone better for the U S and that relay, um, you know, definitely not on Nathan or on any one guy. Uh, it's, it's four guys for a reason. Um, but yeah, obviously like that's kind of our, our baby as the U S uh, that four medley relay is, is this one that we don't typically lose. And so, it definitely uh, uh, hurt a little bit sitting in the stands. It, man, I, I, you know, I feel way more nervous when I'm in the stands than when I'm behind the blocks because I have no control. It's such a, a helpless feeling watching watching a race um, from the stand, especially one that you know I kind of affects me as a as a prelim swimmer on the relay. Um, but yeah, obviously a, a bummer. Yeah, as I'm as I was teeing this up, I got I got I'm, I was looking at my notes and I had the years flipped. The um, the medley relay was uh, we have to we have to address this. Nathan Nathan was coming off of of uh, cancer, yeah, and um, and and made a Herculean you know recovery, and to, and to step back on the world stage, it's like in muscle memory and and grit. Yeah. It, it this this was um, maybe not the best outcome for Team USA. Maybe we should have gone. We should have gone the Apple route yeah. in hindsight, but um, I understand after his long tenure uh, with Team USA why they would why they would go with with yeah. Nathan. And Absolutely. but it was it was it was a pretty dramatic moment to see, and um, uh, yeah, that that was that was that was a tough one. That was a it tough was one. one. It was, the moment was one that I really carried into the next. Well, ended up being two years, but uh, that next year where I was like, you know, in the middle of a hard set, I would just think back to to sitting in the stands and then and watching us get second. And I'd be like, all right, I'm, I'm going to be the guy or we're not going to lose. Like that's, that's, that's how kind of what I was thinking going through that, that season. And then obviously everything got canceled and, and it got pushed back another 12 months. And so <laughs> it ended up being two years, but yeah, it was definitely one, a moment that I kind of held, held close to me and, and kind of, when you get into that dark, dark place, uh, and training kind of pulled that out, to, for some extra motivation. You know, we, we've kind of talked the pandemic to death, but, um, this, it crystallized this moment for me and, uh, and, and unless you want to give it its due, but it, if you, it might be helpful just to crystallize it where, you know, where were you when you found out, okay, we're going to be pushed. This yeah. the Olympic trials are pushed because you have so much emotional energy. You're so invested in this moment, in this trajectory. Then it, then you, then you learn, Oh my God, this is the third time this has happened to you. <laughs> it just occurred to me, Western Kentucky. Yep. Hawk walks in and says, before your senior year, he's going to resign. He's got to resign. Um, then you roll into Olympic, your, your, your Olympic moment when you're on, when things are clicking and uh, you're going to be pushed a year. So you've got experience with this. So you got some resolve with this. What I don't know. Did it feel unfair? Or did you feel like I've done this before? No. Um, so it kind of like starts with NCs getting canceled. Um, I'm not that I'm in the NCA, but I'm swimming in Indiana, like training with its college team. NCs gets canceled. It's like, oh, all right. Then we like they shut down the pool. It's like, oh, well, like try to find another pool space. We're like, 
go to a Y for a couple of days, all the Y is shutting down. All right, well, we'll try and find some others, you know, pool space. Uh, um, and eventually, you know, we ran out of pool space. There was, there was, you're either driving to the north side of India every day for an hour and a half both ways, or you're, you're not swimming. And, and so we're like kind of in this limbo and they make the, the call that, um, uh, you know, you're going to get postponed. And I was like, all right, well, at least we're not going to be driving. Like at least there's, there's some finality to this at, at the moment where we, we don't have to like really try and worry about making sure we're still in shape with, with no pool space. Um, and I was honestly kind of in a, in a, a bit of a rut in training where I was, I was swimming well at meets, you know, I was swimming really well, um, at, at pro swims and stuff, but the day-to-day -day grind was, was kind of getting to me at this point. Um, I was <clears throat> kind of in the second or what was that second year, second, third year of that, the little bit higher volume stuff. And man, it was, it was taking a toll on me. Um, so I wasn't really loving going to practice. I wasn't really, you know, I was excited for the summer, but the day-to-day -day was, was, was killing me. And so when they told us, it was getting postponed. I was kind of like, I'm, I'm just taking some time and I'm not swimming. Um, I'm going to, so I actually <laughs> really enjoyed that time. Uh, it was kind of, <laughs> kind of needed. Um, and so I ended up, I, I went on a lot of like hikes and stuff. I got my dog uh, in that time. And so it was kind of a nice refresher, honestly, for me, because I was in this, this weird spot in training where I wasn't really feeling super motivated. I, I remember I told Corey Chitwood that I would pay him if I could skip all the Friday afternoons <laughs> until trials. <laughs> and, and so, yeah, it ended up being kind of a, a breath of fresh air in a, in a weird way uh, for me. That's, um, you know, I've, I've heard that from a few athletes, not everybody. Yeah. Some people were, some people, yeah, so, yeah, some folks were, you know, are clearly so locked in yeah. and then the, the and then it, it's, it does something to your nervous system to have to go full breaks. Yeah. It's, um, it's, that's not, that's not positive, but it's, it, but it, it sounds like, you know, there were a lot of young swimmers that benefited from this time. They got another year to develop. And it sounds yeah. to me like you've been on a hard burn for three, four years and you, you needed a mental break Yeah, and it worked. Your trials yeah. is fantastic. Let's talk, talk me through trials. All right. Let's go to Omaha. Um, all right. So first day it's two free. Well, second, second day, but my first event is two free prelims go through, um, felt pretty controlled, pretty good. I think I was like 12th into the final or into the semis. Um, I was happy with the, with the swim. <clears throat> Simmies let it rip, uh, go best time. First, first best time in the two free in like three years. And <clears throat> I was like stoked about that. Um, cause I kind of thought my two free might've might suffer a little bit just cause I, I backed off the volume quite a bit that, that year going into the, in the trials. And so wasn't really sure exactly how I was going to go. I thought I could be right around what my best time was, but to actually go best time was, was super exciting. Uh, finals a little bit slower and get fifth. Fifth is like, probably safe on the team, but not guaranteed. And so I was like, all right, like feel good about it. Like probably on the team, but the hundred was what I was like gearing up for that, that whole year. I was, I knew the hundred my bread and butter. I was what I was, you know, it's what I thought I had my best shot in to make, make an individual. So go through prelims and it just felt so easy. Like prelims just felt like it was, was, you know, nice controlled swim semis put a little bit more on, um, you know, and then finals was, was go time. And yeah, obviously getting, getting second is, is a pretty cool, cool thing. And, uh, super, super happy with it. And then went through the 50 and my 50 isn't like my, my best event. And I was kind of checked out at that point. <laughs> uh, I, I had, I had kind of accomplished what I thought I was going to. And, and so made semis and make the final, but I wasn't wasn't too bummed about that we, we didn't even put the we didn't even put the 50 in your bio your semi <laughs> your, your trials experience it's like it, it just it's just too free hundred yeah. free. but yeah yeah no 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 be uh to to represent team usa um 
make the top two is you know first is first and second is last accepted in the big trials yeah uh and and and, and swimming and, and swimming with 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 dressel dressel was grinning through the entire olympic trials yeah he touched the wall and grin but it's um it felt like you're right there in the pocket and you you looked fantastic take me to the olympic games it's a weird olympic games nobody's in the stands yeah. i talked to a lot of people about it some people were tripped out by it some people were like no nah, it's it, it didn't matter. Um, what was your experience um, in terms of like knowing that you're going into this unique Olympic Games where there's no fans? Yeah, uh, the fans thing didn't didn't really bother me at all. Um, it didn't make a difference one way or the other. Uh, at, at camp, um, Michael Phelps kind of had a, a talk with us, and he was like, "Asia is not usually very loud, anyways." <laughs> like the Asian community isn't one that really gets super hyped up and, and anything. So even if there are at this point, we didn't know if there were any fans or not. And uh, he was like, even if there are, I wouldn't expect this whole, you know, huge loud noise of, of cheering and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the no fans thing was fine. Like, I didn't, didn't care if, if you can't get up for the, the Olympic final without fans then you're probably, probably in the wrong spot. Um, and so yeah, it was good though. I was went through camp and I was feeling super good, um, having a good time with the boys, as per usual. And uh, yeah, got to the games. Man, the we were in a hotel for like ten days before we got to the village, and it was super weird because they we, they had us using like the service elevator because they didn't want us to like interact with the public <laughs> and all kinds of stuff. So, but get to the village super good super my room's awesome it was me blake townley and caleb so that was like a sweet room super fun um to be with those guys and yeah so kicking off the, the meet with the, the four free relay um uh, you want to start start going through it i want you to go through it man I, yeah, right. pot, let's take here's the thing forget everybody else we we know what happened you anchored in a 46 six and you won gold <laughs> first gold medal and, 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 and this is a big moment. You know, this is, uh, this, this is the bright lights. 500 million people are watching. Yeah. Um, you know, what was the, what was the, what was the feeling? Yeah, it was awesome. Um, it's, it's this moment that you, you dream of, um, you know, that, that you, you put in all these hours, all these years of work and to kind of have that come to fruition. And in, in this one moment, uh, is pretty surreal um well yeah I, i'll say this one some people win gold medals and 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 it's not a, it's not so storybook it's a, you know they go to the olympics they win their first gold medal and it's it's complicated yours isn't complicated this first gold medal is pure it's pure gold it's pure it's done and and you know it's done with a monster leg on a relay the anchor leg so it's like the perfect this is the perfect moment that you have for the rest of your life. You, this is the moment you remember, like you're the day you're going to die. It's so going to be in your noggin. Right through there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was awesome. Um, and then to do it with, with uh, Blake, who I train with every day is awesome. And then obviously Caleb and I've gotten pretty close over the, the past couple of years, just being on teams together. And so that was cool. And then Brooke or, and then Bo uh, who I've got, who, was at Auburn for a little bit. So we kind of got connected through that, uh, training with Gideon. And, and, uh, so that was, that was a cool group of guys to do it with, um, and to kind of experience it with. Um, do, you know, do you have, do you, it's like, yeah, look, you know, I'm anchoring this thing. This is what I want to go. Did you have something penciled down? Uh, no, I didn't really have like a, a goal split. Um, obviously I wanted to be 46 and if I was, was 46, you know, anything I would have been, wouldn't happy with it, but really, really it was more just about like putting the best foot, foot forward for the, for the guys and for, for the relay. Um, just making sure that we, we got, we got our hands on the wall first. Um, you know, if I had gone 47, two or whatever, and we, we still would have won, I don't know if it would have made it that much different. Um, but it was pretty cool being in the, the, the mix zone and, and having, uh, having the interviewer read off the splits and say six, six at the end was, was pretty sweet. Sweet for sure, man. Talk me through the 100 free. Talk me through that experience because it butts up with the four by two and you have yeah. to, you have to give us a full unpacking of the four by two. Oh yeah. Uh, it, was, it looked painful, buddy. It looked painful. Yeah, it, it sure was in, in more than one way. Uh, but <clears> hundred <throat> free. So coming off the relay, I am 
obviously like living on cloud nine i'm in my mind caleb and i are about to go one two and under three i was i mean that's how i was feeling about it where and i and i wasn't quite sure caleb was gonna win um and so going through it prelims felt fine um not quite as smooth as i wanted it to be but made it through what's all that matters like whatever moving on semis obviously get whatever i finished 11th or whatever missed the final um didn't feel great but i was like pretty pretty quickly over it i didn't really you know i had a, a, a relay to get to get going for and that's that was like these guys need me more than whatever this whatever just happened in this hundred free it doesn't really matter it's over now like it's nothing i'm going to change about it <clears throat> so you know quickly get back down to the the warm up warm down pool get through a good warm down you know get the suit off relax for a little bit had plenty of time new suit on go through a little bit of pace pace goes good sweet we're feeling good <clears throat> uh go to the you know go through the race obviously the race does not go well um uh man i can't really <laughs> explain a much worse feeling than uh than, than a fourth place finish and especially when i think it might have been my my worst my worst two free maybe in, in three or four years um, at, at, a, at a shave taper meet. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a, go ahead. It was a 147.3. One, one yeah. Well, yeah and, I and you were, couldn't have told you what the split was because. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. Did you want to block it? Were you trying to block <laughs> it when you're, when you're trying to erase that from your memory? You know, let's, did, did you, yeah, you can't ruminate over a lot of things when you're in that eight day dramatic yeah. run at the Olympic games. You've got to recover fast and move on. But what people don't think about is that um, you're coming off this emotional high of, of yeah. going to 46, six and winning a gold medal, then going through your hundred and it, the Olympics drains you so badly. You just, your power, your power of just, just like, Ooh, yeah. down. Um, so when I saw that four by two, I was thinking, man, I was immediately thinking about that 46 anchor on the, on, you know, yeah. winning a first gold medal and then going through the hundred freeze. It's the totality of all that. And then you, then you got to step up for a four by two. And to me, that was, that's to me that that's what happened on the back half of your, of your, of your two for sure. split. Uh, in the moment, it, it didn't make much sense to me because I was, I was feeling so good in, in camp. My like, all I can was killing these 200 pace sets. Um, you know, I was gearing up for this relay. I swam, obviously swam better than I was at trials, go 46-6. And I was like, dude, why is this like happening? Like, why am I, why did this happen? Like, I couldn't figure it out in the moment. But I think it is exactly what you're talking about. You know, I, nobody prepares you for this huge emotional high that you're going to, that you're going to be on when you, we win a gold medal. And, and especially in, a, in the fashion that we did um, and how well I swam and, I think I just rode that high for, you know, the 36 hours after that relay that led right into the, the prelims of the hundred free. And it's obviously a learning moment and something that, that I'll take into the next, you know, world championships and then hopefully one of the games, um, you know, in 24, but it's, you know, hopefully it won't be quite as emotional. It won't be the first one. Uh, it won't be, but also I'll, I'll know that, Hey, it's, it's, it's done, you know, figure out how to just get, get past it, uh, which, which sounds bad, but it's just what you have to do in, in the moment to, to be able to perform, especially when you have more races coming up. Um, and so, you know, it's definitely a learning experience, something that, that obviously uh, didn't feel great in the moment. And, uh, but yeah, definitely learned from it. Definitely. And what's going on for, for, if you're an athlete and you're out there and your dream is to go and compete at the Olympic games, what, what this, what it really is, is it a massive, you have a great moment. You don't even have to be in, in a position of, 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 of Zapple and, and go 46, six and win your first gold medal on, you know, anchoring a relay for team USA. You can just be at the Olympics and you're always getting a dopamine dump because you're living in this city of your peers and you're, you, a, a, the whole world's focused on you, but yeah, your dopamine just gets tapped over and over and you get yeah. exhausted. So that four by two kind of made sense, but I can tell you this, I, my phone was blowing up with 
with text messages from from Olympic medalists going back to the 1950s going, what happened on that four by two? They were yeah. they were so everybody was was emotional and and upset in the moment. But yeah, uh, right did with. you so in, in, in 92, I swam the four by two and we um, our coach, Eddie Reese at the time, he was our Olympic coach. He says, okay. don't ever swim that first 100 meters. And uh, he goes, you're hyped up because you should be able to just cruise through yeah. and build that entire 200. And um, it's a, did, w- did, would that have been good advice before the four by two would it have made a difference? Yeah. Uh, it's hard to say. Um, you know, that, that is something that, that, that Troy loves to tell us as well, especially going into that four by two. I feel like every time I've been on it, Troy has come up to us and said, Hey, remember it's, it's a 200, not <laughs> you, you got, you got time to, to kind of build into it. And so, yeah, I don't know if it would have made a difference or not. Um, just kind of like what we just touched on. Like, I think I was just like, so shot emotionally and then and, and mentally. Um, and then which in turn just kind of killed you physically um, just from that, that high that I let myself ride for 36, 48 hours after the, the, re, the fourth relay. I'm going to say one more thing. Yeah. And then we're going to move on um, in a weird way. I actually like when we have moments like this, I think that if, you know, especially if it's coupled with a lot of success, but if you have a moment and it's a real stinker, it's a real, like, who that shouldn't have gone that way. Yep. It creates drama because uh, that's, that's going to have to be, there's going to have to be a correction in the future. Sure. And, um, and uh, we, we like the highs and the lows and man, you started off high, you dipped low and then you finished on a very big high. Yep. Uh, talk me through the lane one, barn burning closer the four by one medley yeah so four by two happens uh the next day ray actually tells me to just take the, the day off so i just kind of hang out in the village i don't go to the pool at all um just kind of try and mentally reset um just hang out with the guys who were awesome through the that whole whole bit of turmoil um and so next two days um you know, the coaches tell me that I'm, I'm still the guy on the four medley. Uh, I was like doubting myself a little bit and they were like, no, dude, you're, you're still like, you're still our guy. Like you're, you're going to be the anchor on that, that four medley really on the last night. And so that, that conversation helped a lot um, knowing that the staff still had trust in me and that they, they knew that I was still capable. And so <clears throat> I was, you know, feeling, I was like, all right, got over it, you know, a day, day and a half later. And Swimming, swimming. Caleb and I are back at the uh, back at the village. We didn't go over the session for the prelim, and so we're sitting in the room together watching. And we're in. I think the, I think we were in the first heat in the prelim. And we swim, and it doesn't doesn't go great. Um, and so we're a little bit nervous going into the second heat. Watching, you know, we just need to get a lane. We just we need a lane. We need a lane. And luckily we, we get seventh. Um, and so we, we got a lane and we were like, then we started chatting up. Yeah. Yeah. It was like a big sigh of relief. Oh, all right. We're going to, and then we, we start chatting about it and we're like, honestly, this might be like a blessing in disguise. You know, GB is not going to be next to us. We know they're going to be, be the guys, the guys to beat. Um, and so we were like, honestly, this might be, might be best for us um, going into it. And so we're like, sweet. Where we got, we got the lane. We we know where we're gonna be. We know where where GB is gonna be. We know where we're not gonna be. You know, butted up next to him. And so that night we kind of have a meeting with with the four guys and uh, and Durden and Lindsay, and just kind of go go over. Um, we go over the the world record splits, and uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure people have heard this story. I think it's been circulated a few times uh, that. You know, they read us off the four splits and they were four splits slower than all four of us had, had been that week already. And so <clears throat> it was, it was like, Hey, we're, you guys got this, you know, you don't need to be this, these superheroes, you know, we, we've already done what we need to do. You know, you just got to replicate what you've done, done already. And so, <clears throat> you know, we go to bed that night, get up the next morning and, head to the pool and uh, the rest is kind of history. Um, super, super cool, cool moment, especially for me, uh, that kind of redemption swim. I definitely, there was a lot of, a lot of stuff coming at me on social media 
uh, after the four by two. And so that was uh, <clears throat> a nice, huh? <laughs> get some, get some, some, uh, so you caught some hell. You yeah. Some oh yeah. Was, there was, uh, and, there and, was you read, a good... and, and you read it. Yeah. I saw, I saw most of it. Um, Oh, man, I, I wish we, I wish I'd known this ahead of time. I could have been like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You could have, you could have like, did you screenshot in this? You could have read it to me on the podcast. You could yeah. Have read I these, mean, these there was, there was some, uh, there was, there was some pretty strong, strongly worded things. People, one of the DMS I got on Instagram told me that I, I shouldn't come back to the U S I, I said, all right, sweet. Thanks, man. Uh, after I didn't respond to anything uh, until on the flight home, I just uh, responded. Thanks. I'll, I'll try better next time. Oh wow! Look at you, man! You're gonna run for president? Like it's, you're just letting it roll. Yeah, off the I back. mean, just, I like that. I like that. Yeah, and so, but anyways, so it, it felt like a bit of a, a redemption swim for me uh, to kind of be able to show people, hey, you, you you think you know who I am or what I'm about or, or you know what you think? Yeah, whatever you think my abilities are or whatever. But it, yeah, you don't you don't know me. You don't know what I do. What I what I you know, what I've put in the, the hours I put in and, and what I, what I'm capable of. And so it was a big, a big, uh, swim for me. It's, it's a, um, I liked, I don't, I said before, I like the drama of, of having a moment that's, that's, that's a failure yeah. But for you personally, for to, to, you know, watching your career, it, 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 there's athletes that go to big meets. And I mean, the, you know, the, the bigger the meet, the more, the more stress there is mm-hmm. and they have a bad moment. And they just crumble. But when people have a bad moment and then they step back up and perform again, this is a whole lot about your character. And this is a whole lot about what's going to come in your future. So the, the, the goal, the 40, you you popped a 46, nine on the eighth day of the Olympic games, which is extraordinary. Can you describe just for, for anybody who has, doesn't have that Olympic experience, maybe have some NC2A experience. Um, you know, what's, how would you compare that eighth day of the Olympic games to the third day of NC two A's third day? Yeah. NC2A's, you're, you're starting to feel numb. You're, 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 you're running on fumes. What about the eighth day of the games? How yeah, they're, they're, they're definitely uh, a bit comparable. Um, NC's is, is a monster of meat. There's so many swims packed into to three, three days. Um, and similarly, the, the Olympics is, is, eight days, uh, not, not quite as packed of, of, of swims, but yeah, the mental drain of, of that is, is quite different. Um, especially kind of how we, how we talked about the, the ups and downs of, of how the meet had gone. And so, yeah, it's, it's definitely, uh, a drainer. Um, cause then, cause then, you know, it's not even all in the pool. You, you go to the, the dining hall and you, you see Yao Ming walking around and you're like, dude, this is freaking insane. Like, this is nuts. <laughs> like, and stuff like that. Just like little things like that happen all the, like constantly at the Olympics. And so, like you said, it's just like these like dopamine hit after dopamine hit of like this crazy stuff that you're, this life that you're living that you kind of feel like you're in a, a dream world. And uh, it definitely, definitely can take a toll on you if, it let, if you let it. It's uh, I, I wanted to have a full unpacking through the Olympic Games. I wanted this exact moment, and, I, and I'm really thankful that you you made some time to step in. Yeah. Um, this, you know, I, I want to come back and, and, and check in with you post Olympics, but in, let's just let's do a teaser before we ever come back and do the pot again. But you know, it, it seems like you took a break, and you were happy to take a break because of the pandemic. Hmm. Should you have taken a break after these Olympic Games? Should you have just said, "Hey, I'm done. I'm 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 taking I'm taking three six months off." Yeah, so I, if I if I had done it again, that's that's what I would have done for sure. Um, so post Olympics, we come back. Obviously, like I go to my hometown, and it's like insane. I'm like from like a small town in Ohio that was super super excited and, and proud, and and you know had a, a ton of support. And so we went back home and, and did that whole thing, and that was fun. And then I you know got to do like throw out the first pitch of the Reds game and then lead like the pregame cheer at the Bengals and all this stuff. And, and, and then I go to ISL and I live in, live in a hotel again for another six weeks. And uh, while we did have like a good time in Italy and I, and we swimming was good. And, and it was like a, there was some, some time for, for some enjoyment. Um, there wasn't many days where I, I wish I would have just been in my own bed in my own, in my own house and, and relaxing a little bit. Um, 
because I had just been on the road for six, eight weeks for the Olympics at camp and, and, and the games and then back on the road. And then <clears throat> that, that's, that's one of the reasons why I didn't go to, to the Netherlands was I just, I was so fried after that, that, that whole thing was that had happened. And so I, I just made a decision for, for myself um, that I needed to kind of spend some time at time, not traveling and at home and uh yeah and then i wanted to, to try and be good at short course worlds which didn't quite happen but um but i think part of that that is also the i didn't really take a break from swimming when i came back home i, I swam because i wanted to go to short course worlds but i should have just taken a break and 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 not and so uh depending on what this summer looks like we might have a little bit of a a smaller extended break so shame on me. We're we're in the middle of more drama. It's just like you're, you're, you're this is you're living in interesting times. <laughs> just <laughs> yeah. with what you happened with you personally. I mean, it's like I can imagine committing to a college, and then I mean, it turned out well. But committing yeah. to a college, and then be like, yeah, your program's being shut down. Then going to another college, having three years, and then your coach is like, sorry, I'm checking out, and um, and then a pandemic. But yep. uh, but you you know you live in interesting times, and we're and, and it's it's ongoing. World yeah, Championships sure. is absolutely being postponed. We we haven't gotten official word on world yeah. on, from FINA, but everybody else is is leaking the information. Yeah. It's it looks as though you know I have, I have no idea what's going to happen this summer. The world's likely could be pushed to 2023. This could be a summer where it's just like we got nationals in Irvine in August. And yeah. um, I, I, how do you feel about that? I've got a personal feeling on it. My personal feeling was. I don't know. I kind of like yeah. nationals in, in Irvine. That sounds like a good year to me. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just, just it, chill. Is weird. it is weird that, uh, that there's no, no international meet. Um, but yeah, I mean, if it, if that's what it is, it is what it is. Like it, there's nothing we're going to change about it. That, that's, that's one of the, the mindsets I took into as the, as we were approaching the games in 21, when there was like still like kind of like, toss around that it might get actually fully canceled or whatever. Everybody was asking me, like, do you think it's going to get canceled or whatever? I was like, listen, I don't get paid enough to worry about if the Olympics are going to happen or not. <laughs> I, I'm, I get paid enough to train and that's about it. <laughs> that's all I can worry about. You know, somebody else will make that decision and let me know. And so, um, yeah, it's kind of like a similar, similar feeling right now. You know, I don't know. It's above my pay grade to, to try and figure out what the, the summer is going to look like for us. Somebody else will tell me what to do and I'll show up and, and swim as best as I can. So maybe, maybe, maybe that maybe it's going to be a big meet in Irvine and that'll be, I think, I think if, if we just have a, a in us nationals in Irvine yeah. and I don't know, I haven't, I, you know, we're no one, the C uh, the executive director, CEO of FINA and Tim Henchy, USA swimming, they haven't told me anything and I haven't yeah. asked them, but it's um, it, if nationals are the big moment this summer, I think USA Swimming will blow it up, and make a big deal out of it. I think it'll yeah. be, I think, I think it'll be a lot of hoopla. I think it'll be a lot of fun, and they'll do it in a in a, in a great way. Yeah, for sure. You are a speedo athlete. We, we've I've spent way too much time with you. I've, <laughs> I've, oh, I've been very very selfish with you. But um, so let's wind this down. You are you are Team Speedo. Tell me your make waves moment. Yeah, I think one of the the kind of big defining moments of my career was that that first world's team. Um, you know, I was kind of similar to that freshman year at NCAA, the deer in the headlights. Um, but it was on this even bigger stage with all the big names. Um, you know, I can remember just trying to, to sit at as many meals as I could with Nathan to just try and soak up any knowledge I could pick out that, that he would just, you know, accidentally let slip out and then had a meal or whatever. Um, and so that's super cool moments. Um, you know, super fond memories of that first trip and, and kind of just trying to be the sponge of information of all these veterans who, who had, had been there before and, and done so many things. So, so it's, it's a pretty cool moment. And uh, I think it's safe to say that, and, and we've always counted on Nathan and we were kind of wondering who was going to fill those shoes. And, and I like that you shared this make ways moment because clearly you filled those shoes and you filled them in a great way. What's it. in your speedo bag. Yeah. What's your go, what's your go to? Yeah, I think my my favorite thing uh, is the the Hyper League goggles. Um, they're like kind of the like next gen of like the 
the FS3 goggles that everybody loves so much. And so these ones are, are just as good and uh, I, they're so comfortable. They, they have uh, such good like field of view. Um, they're just like kind of the, the perfect all around, all around goggles. What's happening in the near future? So just give us a little preview. What, what, what can you expect from you? It sounds like you might be doing some hiking, maybe take a break. Are, are, <laughs> <Yeah>. are you... <laughs> no, no, probably not quite, not quite there right now. Um, yeah. Coming off of, of the, the tough, tough uh, short course worlds, I have realized that I do have to train to be good at swimming. And so, <laughs> um, and so uh, whatever pro, pro swim meets happen, uh, we'll be there. And, and uh, then whatever, however the summer shapes out, I'm sure we'll be at those meets as well. All right. Great talking to you, buddy. You have any parting thoughts or any, should I, did I miss a question? Was there a question I missed? It's like, Mel, you should ask me this. Man, Everybody should know this about me. I don't think so. I feel like we hit it all. I, th- I think we hit it all too. Will you come back and, and give us another unpacking? Because I, I appreciate the historical perspective from Zapple. Yeah, absolutely. It was, a, it was good. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcasts on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.